tabs versus spaces. That's right, I'm breaking the build. We don't shy away from the controversial topics. On today's episode, we will answer the ageless question of whether developers should use tabs or spaces in their code. So buckle up and make sure your trays are in the upright position because today we might be experiencing a little bit of turbulence. Welcome back to Breaking the Build. I am your host, Brenton House. Now on today's episode, we are going to tackle the issue of tabs versus spaces. Now, if you are not already familiar with this topic, this is a debate that's been going on in the development community for many, many years about whether you should use tabs or spaces to indent your code. Now, I have to warn you that many families have been estranged, you have friendships broken, and coworkers shunned over this issue. On our show today, we're gonna have two very special guests who are gonna talk about their passion for tabs and spaces. But in order to protect them from retaliation, we're going to obscure their identity using memojis. So first guest on this show is Joe, who is a huge fan of using tabs. Welcome to Breaking the Build, Joe. Thanks, man. All right, why don't we start off by you just telling us why you love tabs so much. Sure, man. Tabs are like the ultimate efficient keystroke. I can hit one key and I can have it do the work of like two or even four keystrokes. Plus, I can get the code to look the way I want it to look. If I like seeing tabs as two spaces, I can do that. If I like seeing it as four spaces, I can do that too. I can code so much faster and accomplish so much more by saving all those keystrokes. So what's it like being on a team that doesn't use tabs? It's hard, man. It's hard. I open up some of the code from other developers and it's just like so full of useless, bloated code. I mean, why, man? Why? I mean, I tried to tell them how much easier their life would be if they just used tabs, but they couldn't hear me over the sound of the clickety-clack of their space bar going. Mm -hmm. Okay, then. Well, if you had this one chance to pitch your idea of using tabs to the entire world, what would you say? The days of spaces are over, man. I mean, you only have a finite number of keystrokes that you're going to enter in your lifetime. Do you really want to use up all those and waste all that time hitting that space bar over and over? The days of tabs are here. Well, thanks for being a guest on Breaking the Build, Joe. Thanks, man. All right, next on the show, we have Jane, who loves using spaces. Welcome to Breaking the Build, Jane. Thanks for having me. All right, Jane, why don't you tell us why you love spaces so much? Well, it started when I was really young. I just love adding spaces to things. It didn't matter if it was text or emails, no matter what it was. Then when I started coding, spaces just made perfect sense. I mean, I love the order and control I get when I add spaces to things. My code just lines up and it, it looks so good. Sometimes I take a step back and I just admire how much it looks like a piece of art, really. So what do you do when you have to work on a team that doesn't use spaces? Oh, I don't. I tried that once and it didn't work out very well. I mean, the code was all over the place. It's like there's no rhyme or reason to anything. I tried to tell them, embrace the space. Your life could be so much better and more beautiful too, but they just laughed. After that, I made sure I asked on every future job interview, does your team use tabs or spaces? I may not have quite as many job opportunities, but the quality of life is much better. Okay then. If you had this one opportunity to pitch your idea of using spaces to the entire world, what would you say? Sure. 
Let go of your bad habits and embrace the space. You won't regret it. Oh, and I found if you take a screwdriver and remove the tab key, it's a great way to go cold turkey. Well, thanks for being on the show, Jane. Thank you, Brenton. Well, there you have it. Tabs and spaces. But do we have to live in a development world divided? What if there were a solution where the likes of Joe and Jane could coexist? Now, I've come across something. It's not a magic pill, but it possibly could get us closer to a solution. What I'm talking about is code linting. Now, what is code linting? Code linting is a static analysis that's run on your source code to find problems and issues. Now, what those problems and issues are is usually determined by configuration of the tool. Now, most languages have code linting tools, but what I'm going to focus on today is ESLint, which is, in my opinion, the best linting tool for JavaScript. Now, if you go to ESLint homepage, you will see a ton of different rules there. Now, all these rules are things that can be configured to turn on and off to match what your team's or individual's preferences are for code. For example, take a look at the rule that is for indentation. This now allows you to specify tabs or spaces for the style for your code. Now, ESLint can be installed using the command line or it is integrated in with a lot of the IDEs. For example, Visual Studio Code, which happens to be my favorite, has a plugin that allows you to do the linting with ESLint. There's also a lot of the other IDEs that support linting tools. Now, this is great if you want to throw an error and possibly shame a developer for using the wrong style of code, but how does this help our Joe and Jane situation? Well, there is another feature that ESLint has and a lot of the other linters have as well. It's called autofix. Now, if you kind of go back to look at that list of rules I showed you for ESLint, well, a lot of those rules have a little wrench next to them and that wrench means that they support autofix. This means that if you run autofix with ESLint either in your IDE or command line, it will autofix these. So say for example, you code in spaces, but your team wants tabs. Well, then when you run this rule, it will convert your space indentation to tab indentation. Now, this can also be configured as part of a git commit hook or even better as part of the build process so that say before you merge a branch, you run a linting test on it to make sure everything is styled correctly, or you can auto fix it then, and then you can have developers code in whatever they want. While this process is not ideal, it does solve some other problems as well. I mean, how many developers have gone to do diff, say you're doing a code review for PR or something, and you look and like 80% of it is white space issues. So if you can eliminate the white space problem, you've saved yourself a lot of time and heartache. Now, ESLint rules are something that can be defined in JSON, JavaScript, or YAML, and they're put in the root of your project. Now, in this file, you'll see that there's rules that you will enable or disable, but there's also something else. There's something that's called base settings, and what you can do is you can package up all the settings that you like for yourself or for your team and say publish them to npm. Then when you go to install a Node.js app, you can simply install this package. For example, I've published one for my Node.js projects and I've taken all the settings, put them out on NPM. Now when I go to install a new Node.js project, I simply go and install these settings and I have something to start with. There's another feature that base settings can do and that is base settings can be base settings for other base settings. Take for example Titanium. So if you're not familiar with Titanium native mobile apps, they are JavaScript based and very similar to Node.js. So I could take my Node.js base settings and I use that as a base settings for Titanium base setting. I take that, I modify it, I add some things that are very specific to Titanium, I package that up, I put that on NPM, and now when I go to install a Titanium native mobile app, I simply can use that Titanium base settings. Now I will post this code and links to other resources out in the show notes, but I think that's a wrap for today's episode of Breaking the Build. I am Brenton House. Until next time, keep coding strong. You're still here? It's over. All right, hit that little bell after you subscribe and I'll let you know when there's another episode. Now go back to work.